Thank you very much, Freak. And we are here presenting you the first ever pre presentation of the Challenger Series here in North America. And we have two awesome games coming to you. Myself and Kobe going to bring you those in just a few minutes. We got a little bit of talking to do. I really like the fact of what we just saw, and I hope, or in the LCS, I should say. And I hope those picks, that variation, leads into Challenger because we heard Jat and Freak saying you already get some crazy picks here. I know the LCS teams are showing a lot of varied strategies. And this game is actually going to yeah. be on North America Live server. So we will get to see some techniques that you guys at home can then take to your uh, climb of the ranked ladder after the soft reset. Might be able to get some tips and tricks here. All right, so tonight Kobe and I are going to be calling up two huge play-in matches. Now, these guys are going to be heading on to the quarterfinals if they can make it. Our first one coming up is going to be Wei or Zhao Wei Zhao. Obviously, you know, and LMQ, they are a huge team coming in here. They're going to be going up against VVV Red. And, of course, you cannot forget Cognitive Forge. They are the number one top-seeded team right now. They're going to be heading off against YSO Esports. And, and the winners of these matches are going to be jumping straight in to the round of eight. And we got to take a look at that bracket because it has been filled out quite a bit for these teams. In the top of the half of the bracket, it's the Walking Zed. You might remember from the spring promotion tournament, they were able to take Team Coast to five games. But that's, you know, Coast now in the LCS, that's pretty good, five games. That's going to be a team to be reckoned with. So here in Challenger Series, they'll play the winner of Sunday's Tint Gaming versus Skyline Battle in the first quarterfinal matchup. The second quarterfinal matchup will actually be decided tonight as the winners mm -hmm. of our two games will meet up Sunday, January 26th. In the bottom half of the bracket features two more spring promotion tournament participants. Determined Gaming will take on the winner of tomorrow's Curse Academy and no big deal matchup. As Jat said before, they're not taken lightly. While Cognitive Gaming will face off against VVV Gaming White. And for those of you still getting up to speed on the Challenger Series, all eight teams that win their way into the quarterfinals earn cash and championship. Challenger Series points. And those Challenger Series points are what will determine who gets into the playoffs with the top three teams in the playoffs earning a spot in the Summer Promotion Tournament. That's right. And as always, for all the information on the Challenger Series, including schedule, stats, splits, and more, much more, remember to head over to lolesports.com. Just pull down that menu under Leagues and Tournaments mm -hmm. and then choose the North American Challenger Series, and you're there. So now you know what's on the line. Let's get to it. Our first Challenger Series match of the night is going to be LMQ versus VVV Gaming Red. Like we said, there's a trip to the quarterfinals, cash money, and Challenger Series points on the line. And Like I said before, I'm super excited to see if the picks come out here to be a little bit different. A little bit unorthodox. I, I, with what's happened in the first two days, I'm calling this like generation comfort picks for League of Legends right now because that's what we've seen. And I, we talked about a little bit about Xiao Wei Xiao, the solo laner here for yeah, LMQ. Absolutely. He plays a lot of different champions. Um, definitely Gragas and Orianna are in there. So some very versatile ones that you can play into anything and they could easily be first picking that. Um, and save their later picks for uh, other positions. And I love that we may see some Ori here. A lot of champions that haven't been getting picked. My favorites, and they've been seeing the bench. I don't like it. I'm getting the curse ask. All these melee AD carries are <laughs> taking her glory, huh? Not, you're not having it? Not having it. Or you can just get blocked. At least you can't block Windwall. Right? Yeah. Well, he's not going to be in the game here. We got yeah, the we band, got band down band on out. Yasuo and Ziggs. So Ziggs, the late game, wave clear, and sieging game. Yeah. Not really going to be a part here. Um, a little part of me is glad because it's not that fun to watch the building destruction and the constant wave clearing. More like to look for the kills. We'll see if Nidalee's going to be left in here. We'll see if any poke comps are going to be coming out. Cassidy being taken out. A lot of Cassidy, Kha'Zix, and I guess you could say Teemo. A little too much, <laughs> little too much map pressure from these type of champions. Uh -huh. And you always see him banned out. Kai is getting Kha'Zix banned out against him all the time. Yeah, the roaming potential. A Kha'Zix that does get ahead early. We saw in the EG game, Pabelter was able to have uh, a really, really wide sphere of influence yeah. from that mid lane with his Kha'Zix, just tearing people apart. If you get it ahead early um, that quickly, mm -hmm. then you can roam around and use that vision control to assassinate people. This is interesting that VVV, well, they haven't locked it in, but if they decide to choose jungler because they don't have to, they've already seen Elise has been picked for that first tier, first wanted pick on the side of LMQ, so they're safe to kind of get the support they want, get the mid, not mid, you know, I can show that now, but get Elise, what they want. And Elise is always a yeah. very safe pick. Um, my advice to a lot of like solo queue junglers is you need to learn Elise and Vi at least right now. Um, it's a really, Elise they're, Elise. they're really good tools for just climbing up the solo queue yeah. ladder. And it doesn't really give away anything about your team composition if you first pick that Elise, just because she's such an all, 
all-around good champion. Well, you go ahead and you pick your top lane, and it might be locked in. <laughs> <laughs> the Gragas does come out, though, so even though that Ziggs is out, we still get the Siege potential. That's going to be coming in on VVV's side as they pick him up. We'll see what Cheese can do with him in the middle lane. And still just hovering on the side of LMQ. It does look like they want the Renekton. It's going to be good just for a top lane, safe lane there. They're not looking to really show too much of a composition. It's just a strong combo. Renekton lane, has been a favorite in China for a long time. Easy here. to say. So, you, can dive, yeah. you can dive past those turrets that aren't there. He's <laughs> another champion that you could be very confident blind picking. Yeah. Because Renekton doesn't really have bad early game matchups. Even against the super popular picks right now, he does really well. I do want to note, though, that they took away the Gragas uh, from Xiao Wei Xiao very early on. I like that move from VVV. Right. Got to do that. It's it's kind of like, not kind of like, it's like focusing out Hotshot. You know that guy is going to be a problem if you give him these certain champions. You have to take it out. There's always going to be a few of those direct combat bans towards your best players on the team. And that's why they get that, that role. Still looking at the Ezreal. Actually got to see him last game. Bringing back the safe play. Like I said, the versatility. Classic don't mash me. Versatility, yeah. Classic don't <laughs> mash me. That's absolutely correct to bring that out. So it's going to be paired. Whatever, if he does lock it in, it'll be paired with that Annie, which is so popular right now. Seeing how uh, high her roaming potential is to make yeah. plays not only in the lane, but also elsewhere. If he can get free, if the Ezreal is, gets to the point where he can be safe in that lane and farm by himself, that would free up a tremendous amount of playmaking ability here and get a roaming any around and just cause havoc all over. I like the Leona pick if it happens against Gragas. You can always solar flare that person that gets caught out by the explosive cask. Kind of give him a little bit of safety, a little bit of peel if he needs it for everybody diving in on him. And please lock that in. I'd love to see some Oriana play, especially with this somewhat dive composition. For, well, not somewhat, now that they may lock in Leona. There's three people going in. So. We always look for ball delivery systems, too, when, when we see the Oriana pick here. Renekton's decent at it. His uh, slice and dice, though, the first one's pretty short. You really want to get uh, through a minion or through a champion right. in order to get the second one. Then it could be used as a pretty good engage. Uh, but besides that, it's going to be that long range Leona catching people out. So that'll be the main thing to start up these fights for LMQ. And by the way, that's pretty much what they're looking like. They want to have nice team fights so they're gonna be looking for that dragon control yeah it's gonna be a slow game at the turrets at the dragon everybody has a little bit of poke a little bit of zone control to do there more so on the side of gragas but you don't want to center it on an ori alt either so it's gonna be pretty good for these teams the lanes don't look like anybody's gonna have a definitive win if the 2v1 happens who do you give it to uh i mean 2v1 versus i mean renekton is just an all-around good champion but mundo uh, he does have a little bit of extra regen, and a lot of them have been running teleport. Right. So if he's able to take a bunch of harass and then teleport back into the lane after his first uh, trip home, then he can last a little bit longer. We'll have to see if it's uh, actually going to go to that top lane, though. And you can see they actually go and reconsider the Vi pick. It probably was going to be in there, but they hovered at second, realized they didn't need to pick it, and gave themselves a better champion select just from top to bottom by leaving that out and getting what they wanted. Something to note as well as Global Presence is making a comeback. We've seen Karthus's, 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 Karthai, Pan Karthai like Pantheons <laughs> today, and now we got an Ezreal coming in. So Ezreal, yeah, I mean, the, the True Shot Barrage, that counts as Global, I guess. But really, both of these teams are looking for the uh, the team fights here because mm -hmm. Mundo doesn't run, isn't running that teleport. He does have the option, but he wants the Combat Summoner of Ignite to go up against Renekton, who's a beast in those early levels. If you also give up your Combat Summoner, going against Renekton becomes extremely difficult. So uh, I can understand where he's coming from here. doesn't want to run the teleport. And we actually see that B-Sin on Mundo had Ignite for himself as well. So that could be a back and forth fight lane. As the teams load into the Rift, let's break down how these guys won their way into tonight's matchup, starting with the second seeded LMQ. So LMQ, like we said, is yeah. a Chinese team, and they're the former sister squad of Royal Club, who were pretty famous, uh, yeah. showed up at the Worlds last year, and they decided to try their hand at the North American scene. We talked about they came over. They were the second best team to come out of the ranked challengers. Um, we already talked about the next coming up match has the number one, and they also uh, have some things to prove here. Yeah, they do. They showed super well. They proved they were the number two seed. They were able to decimate Tempest in 31 minutes. So with these strengths coming out, we'll see if we can see some today. 
And those strengths were the AD carry, uh, the silly. He dominated his lane in that game with 11 kills, 8 assists, and 1 death on Lucian. And then their mid laner, Xiao Wei Xiao, also had an amazing game. He got casted in. Uh, Not this that's, game, though. That's a very <laughs> rare champion for anybody to get, but he got the cast in, and he went 7-1-6 right. and six in that game. It's not surprising because, you know, he has been a top-level uh, mid laner f in China for quite a while now, and some interesting facts are, you know, I compared him to Frog in a little bit. He's got basically the second place record for hitting that 300 minion mark um in the lpl it's first place because frog never played there mm -hmm. so he got to 300 minions in just over 23 minutes and his unofficial time of 2330 would put him right behind frog as far as the world records are concerned <laughs> all the records on the other side of the rift tonight starting in the red corner is the appropriately named vvv gaming red <laughs> All right, and the uh, VVV Gaming Red, this is going to be their first game in the Challenger Series because they won their game yesterday by forfeit against Team 8. Right. And the fans of the LCS will recognize one of the faces. We talked about Don't Mash Me is in the lineup. He's the former AD carry of Coast. He is. Actually, speaking of AD carries, if uh, just like looking through players and looking through what the Challenger teams had, there was an LMQTC Tabe, and everyone's like, whoa, it's this <laughs> AD carry is awesome. Thanks, Cutie Pie, for making a troll account and being LMQTC Tabe. So like, everybody would look at that and be like, wow, is he really? Did he decide to come over here? Because everybody else was. So it was a perfect time. To there's, do a cutie pie troll. There's a couple of people changing their <laughs> names to so like uh, Zhao WX and Wei Zhao and all these different variations trying to troll. But this is indeed Xiao Wei Xiao, different yep. from uh, Wei Zhao, who's yeah, the yeah, popular yeah. AD carry over there. So everybody getting confused. It, it'll all work out in the end. It'll all absolutely <laughs> work out in the end. So we know that Wei Zhao, or uh, yeah, Xiao Wei Zhao in mid lane, didn't, he did get his Orianna, mm -hmm. didn't get casted in. At Gragos is actually taken out and taken on the side of Cheese, so we'll have to see how he plays against that. I've heard that it, or it is true that Gragas kind of pokes early Ori around for a bit, but it's always hard to hit those alties when you can body slam. Yeah, I mean, Ori, pretty good, you know, in most matchups. He's one of those champions Become that skill. can fend for herself. Yeah. You know, she can, she can play aggressive versus some people, but she can also go really defensively and just hold on to CS. It's one thing like I that. like about her kit. Yeah. Like you need a few more in your shield, you go a few more in shield. Something like you can do with Lee Sin in the jungle. We actually saw that uh, when Inox took it, he went W in the top lane real hard and then tried to roam a lot. So different styles coming out all over the place. It's been, it's been a different split <laughs> than most. I know, just starting out. We've got Warwick. <laughs> Two days in. How many champions We've we got used? Teemos. We've got uh, everything uh, popping down. I uh, mean, I almost forgot the Teemo. Come on, why would you bring it back up? Yeah, <laughs> you want to erase that from your memory? <laughs> the games, they do get kind of painful to watch because the entire team is uh, scared to move around the map yeah. because there's mushrooms everywhere. Suffocating is like right. my favorite word coming out of yeah, this we'll, weekend. Yeah, we'll get off of that, though. There's, there's no <laughs> team out here. This is going to be a pretty clean game between two uh, very strong team fight oriented right. compositions. So really, it's going to come down to the individual play, I think. And uh, that'll be great for the Challenger match because people are watching Challenger for those little take-home uh, things that they can use to get closer to Challenger themselves. And to make it into the round of eight for these guys is... Uh, a different weight to take on, but definitely one off of their back. They have new teams to look at. They've made it past that second step, and they can focus on you know maybe something new, maybe something that will take them even faster to the win. I'm. I mean, I still like that fact about the uh, the LMQ. Whenever they're in ranked, it's it takes them a long time to find a game because a lot of other people will stop killing against them because they don't want their ratings to drop. <laughs> Just coming into that into this uh, tournament with that kind of reputation, it's got to be a little scary. Even for Don't Mash Me, right. who's already played in the LCS. I wonder when you get a chance against these teams. You remember back to like uh, PAX Prime with CLG versus Legion, when Legion dro dro uh, dragged it out to like 75 minutes, and the primary cause was w to figure out how CLG was beating them so much. So, so just start you're, thinking about the next game and just Yeah, absolutely. You take that one. time, stall <laughs> it out, be like, we'll give you, you know, tire, tire you out, and try to get more momentum behind your team in the game because a lot of it got, does come down to mind games. A lot of it comes mm -hmm. down to if you if you actually go on tilt a little bit, most people can't come back from that. That's what we were talking about earlier where that's the silence comes in and the communication drops for a team and it becomes mm -hmm. chaos. And especially um, since they are playing this one live, uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's a couple other factors they have to deal with, you know, pauses and stuff like that. And this is actually a... Um, the live patch that was very recently yep. came out. So all the adjustments, you need to make those adjustments quickly. It just kind of reinforces yeah. 
the value that League of Legends puts on flexibility. That's pretty much what you're rewarded for most in this game, is being able to adapt quickly. So we'll have to see if these teams have been able to adapt already to the new patch. If they've been watching Cloud9, they seem to have a pretty good handle on it, how to go from patch to patch. They, everybody thought that would be their kind of downfall, but it mm -hmm. seems that teams that can just adapt faster are the ones to make it. It's not that you still have a good team fight. It's you actually have to change up your style of play. It's been pretty crazy. Looking at what has happened throughout all the splits, it's interesting to see now with one of the tankiest metas or most mobile metas we've had right now that all the comfort picks are coming back, like I said earlier. All the, like, the Karthuses that could get wiped mm -hmm. out, they're being played a little differently. Scar didn't go to the bottom lane. They stayed in the mid. So there's still things that can be mixed up for these teams. What would be your comfort pick? If you had to go play I want sub into this game. Into this what game? What would be your comfort pick, yeah. Oh, man. Probably Ori. <laughs> Probably Ori. Oh, there you go. Yeah. go I, right I would say Kennen, but then you know like level 8, and you're not going to kill anybody. Uh -huh. You just okay. get kicked out of the fight, or somebody's going to push you out. I like the I like the Ori call here, because, I mean, it does work with their, their team. It looks like they're going to have um, some early dragon fights in the future here, <laughs> um, as soon as they do get their game rolling. What about you? Uh, my comfort pick? For this game. For this game? I would I would take the place of that Vi. I love that Vi, Vi so much. Probably my favorite champion. Um, I mean, Umumu's always got a, a place in my heart, but <laughs> Vi is just so much fun to play. The feeling that you get um, actually hitting people in the face with that champion, it actually kind of translates, and you, you get a little excited. I don't think Mumu <laughs> would get you to the second highest ELO and Riot as you are right now, but pretty impressive. Good oh, plays. Wow. <laughs> Nice shot. So out. <laughs> almost almost getting into the game here. LMQ versus VVV Gaming Red. Myself and Kobe to bring you two of the Challenger Series matchups tonight. And as I said before, yes. this is the premiere of the Challenger Series here in North America. We've been doing EU the past couple days, and we are going to be on to the Rift, Kobe. This is going to be one hell of a matchup. We see Xiao Wei Zhao taking the mid lane. Mash me as on AD carry for the names if you haven't been too familiar with these teams. Those are your guys to lock on to. All right, we have made it into the match, and it looks like a Targon start for Leona. I do really like this uh, pickup, by the way, be just because it, you can shove the lane super early with the execute from that item. The first two minions going down is a huge help in these dual lane, dual lane fights that have really become so centered around the early level two and the early aggression. Especially when you have these champions Next like time. Leona, who can make you pay for that early. <laughs> yeah. The BM like begins the already. I like the mana pop by here, and obviously the fast charge off fountain coming from uh, Rockblood. Gets that charged up right fast. Looks like he will want to use it in lane and chug that potion to keep going aggressive. Yeah, he's going full combat here with the Doran yeah. shield start on Annie. Uh, a little bit less aggressive than the Doran ring, uh, because it's uh, you're going to have a less power but you will be mm -hmm. able to take more hits we've only so, really seen that in Korea right now yeah right? when Leona like lands her combo on you uh, you'll be happy <laughs> that you've got that shield and we'll see if Rockblood really itemizes for that Leona too I wouldn't be surprised if LMQ tries to take advantage of that early level two yeah another thing I wanted to shout out is the early trinkets I'm definitely a huge fan of the five ward trinket start uh, but we do have one sweeper on LMQ coming out already. The reason I like the five wards, uh, trinket wards, instead of having the sweeper early is because your early sweeper, the only wards you are going to be clearing out are other trinket wards. That only lasts one minute anyway. So it's kind of hard to find those in the first place. And if you guess wrong, then you're kind of wasted your trinket there. And I would much rather start out with a ward trinket and then switch early. Uh, over to that sweeper, maybe my second back or something like that. The no always kind of point out that the wards die when the junglers are kind of getting ready to come out of the jungle exactly. as well. So, the, I mean, Ooh. look at that aggression down bottom. Not even level two. Rockblood eats the cookie, but he doesn't eat the mana pot. Doesn't eat it just yet. He is going on his biscuit, and he is very, very low. It's not even level two for these guys. LMQ is going hard in that bottom lane. Right, level two coming up in a couple more minions. Mm -hmm. Annie is having to recall already. Pretty happy that she has that shield. Was taking wow. a beating to the face. That is still absolutely not good for these guys. That means that they will not have synergy at level six unless they're somehow left alone or able to get kills there. And it looks like Zhao is uh, going pretty aggressive here early with the Ori, trying to get as many auto attacks off to harass as well as the uh, command attack and dissonance for the early damage chunks. Getting him on Gragas, forcing him to chug some of those 
potions that he has, burn his way through that flask. You know, I do actually, and haven't considered this before, like the matchup of Annie versus Lucian, because you can kind of walk Tibbers in front of a calling during the fight, block pretty much all that damage. Yeah, I mean, it, it does uh, hurt Tibbers quite a lot, and you'll get 50 gold for the Tibbers. Bing, so bang, boom. I guess everybody wins there. <laughs> <laughs> you find Tibbers, and the other guy gets gold. And he's happy, so is your, you know, is your opponent. 4.7 gold in the pocket of all teams. They're dividing that evenly. Good guy teams. <laughs> B Sin in the top lane, but not really. It's Mundo. He comes over to wave high there <laughs> yeah, by, right? uh, by making a little pit stop. Drops off the trinket ward in the tri bush to just protect the Mundo here. And as expected, Renekton with the slight early lead does get to sort of bully the lane real early. Oh, using Flash the minions, it. very nice. The frenzy's on, and the cocoon misses, but they do grab Cheese Beluga's flash. Traded it for the Elise flash, and he's still chasing here. Vi shows in the mid, though, so he dissuades him from any further pursuit. How, why is this happening in the bottom lane? Mashmi's up 18 to 12 here. He's pushing back. Annie just got to lane. LMQ played that super passive after Annie left. Yeah, I mean, they were up at the turret and didn't decide to go for the dive here. There's a lot of CS that's at their turret now. Yeah. So the CS discrepancy, not quite so bad as it looks. Plus that Targons that we talked about mm -hmm. means Leona took a couple extra creeps and shared the gold with Lucian. Uh, we're also going to have to keep an eye out whenever you do have that Targons. You want to try and get your charges. Ooh, ooh little Bruza. aggression. Jeez, Beluga was actually playing that one a little bit more aggressive and staying to the side of the minions. That's kind of almost a tell with anybody that needs to get around minions to attack, like an Ari trying to charm. Definitely one of the biggest things, um, as a jungler especially, is you want the laners that you're ganking for yeah. not to give your gank away. <laughs> uh, if they're behind and they're playing uh, pretty aggressive, right. then you, you should be tipped off here. Uh, your opponent's probably not just being uh, playing bad. Uh, you, you get a lot from respecting your opponent. And you have to think that they're coming in with a gank. Ooh, we got a very nice full vault break around that one. Now the cocoon. How do you split the uprights when they're that close together? The ignites there. No name does get a good repel back onto Porpoise Pops. And he's able to take it. So they trade kills. Uh, first blood does go down, though, uh, for VDV. A little miss cocoon there. A little bit rough. End up taking him out anyways, though, so not too big of a trade. And there's actually a good bit of action everywhere. You may not see the HP bars falling, but Mashmi has already came back, chugged the mana potion, still has his health there. And these guys keep buying those consumables to go back to lane and really stay in the face of LMQ. Yeah, a lot of mana potions. Uh, coming out. Yeah, even right uh, LMQ's buying. Yeah, Vasily, he's uh, he's definitely doing pretty well, though. Even though they did back off after the early aggression, got he's using that lead, and uh, the Leona shared charges from her Targons mm -hmm. means that he's got a, an, a hefty purse. <laughs> Still very early in this matchup. Nobody's grabbed too much of a definitive lead. Still seeing that, you know, even that Rockblood got press, or pressured back at level one and left the lane. Mashmi and them are still kind of holding them to the turret. Like you said, Relic Shield helping out and still keeping Vansili, or Vasily up on those minions. Yeah, something to note about that bottom lane. You can see how the, the feel of this lane has kind of changed, and that's because Annie does not have her stun anymore. When Annie's got that particle that tips you off, her stun is right. up. That's when LMQ play a bit further back, and you can see them let it go into their turrets. And then after this, Annie uses her stun, they move up again, and they take the power position. They let Leona get her charges off uh, for the extra shared gold, and they start looking for the aggression there that could come from a Leona combo. This is that spot you were talking about, the Fog of War just next to the wall turret, or the turret wall, I should say. And it looks like Porpoise Pops is forced out of that situation. He will not be able to bring anything to the table just yet, but the junglers are trying to make an impact, at least Vi is. She's been to the top lane, they've been mid, but they're just not finding anything yet. Yeah, they did find each other once up in the top lane. Yeah. He traded those yeah. kills, but yeah. since then he's looking to get up to level six, because Vi, that's where your your power really spikes here. And since they already burned Xiao Wei Xiao's flash, a visit back to mid would be would really do wonders here for Cheese Beluga to get him back in the game. He's going to be calling for that one as Ignite's coming back up. If it is going to happen, it'll happen soon. You see this mirrored uh, purchasing as well. 
Cheese Blue actually went for consumables over, really, we see the Doran's Ring start, and uh, very nice defense there, but it did look like they were trying to set something up off those summoner spells. Right, Vi came in there, not level six, though. She needed to clear mm -hmm. another camp, so it was a reactionary ult from Cheese Beluga. If Vi was level six, they might have been able to pursue a bit further and try to make LMQ pay for that aggression. Quick mobility boots actually coming out for No Name in the jungle on Elise. So he can definitely get around and make more ganks off. He wants to be able to out gank this Vi. It's already post six though, so Vi's next gank is going to be so much more potent. So what do we see about the mash me actually? Now we have another Ezreal. He's going for Triforce. This is kind of causing Vasily. We see more BF swords or Bloodthirsters than Triforce on Lucian lately. Yeah, you know, both of them rushing for the Triforce uh, means they'll kind of have the same power curve. Uh, Lucian does have more early game per ta uh, power in the lane, right, though. Right, little so bully. He, he just inherently has more bully potential. Uh, the Trinity Force on Ezreal, a little bit of a callback here for Don't Mash Me. Uh, it just means that his outright damage isn't going to be there for a bit. Xiao Wei Zhao, now with that blue buff, able to use W a little bit more in lane. It's pretty mana intensive for Ori if you try to always use that. So he's more comfort in pressuring that. But get a little roam by Cheese Beluga here. This could be bad to come in for LMQ. All right, he walks through this Tribush ward, but since a cleaver doesn't land, you know, this probably won't be any pursuit. Right. They actually turned back around. Too. They were like, yeah, we're ready. We'll bait this fight in and take the kills. Uh -oh. this boss. Now he might get pinched in his own jungle, though. Now he's six. He took those camps that were necessary. And he's trying to get back out here in, in the mid lane. You're right. Cheese Beluga getting a little pop there, but they keep it safe from the bottom. Oh, nice job. Taking oh, that away. Shall, a little shall. cheeky steal. Nothing came out of the bottom lane either, so not as much wasted time, but they're just not getting getting much out of their transitions here. It's an interesting choice by Elise to camp top yeah. because it does leave open this bottom lane for Annie Stop. to set up a level 6 Vi gank, which would be amazing for them to turn that around because they need to make something happen as the top turret's falling and they start heading over towards this dragon that's been pre-warded by LMQ. And something we didn't notice actually is that Mundo did not, or I didn't, that he did not take Ignite. He had that champion select, switched to teleport, and he did not use it to get back to lane there either. So saving face, knows his team is going to be grabbing Dragon, just goes ahead and guards that second turret. Uh, yeah, he was able to change that summoner in the last mm -hmm. seconds when we couldn't see champion anymore. So he, he's got the teleport just in case you want to go for the Dragon there. That's why I think they made this call. Okay, so that's, that's a really good call by LMQ. They go to the source of the global. They know that they'll just trade the Dragon for this top turret objective because they wouldn't want to, to fight the Dragon anyway. They're down a teleport spell. Mash me. Every little bit of extra gold that they have, they're putting into potions. And why not, right? You're going to be sustained in lane. You're going to be able to stay a little bit longer. But still, zero kills in these bottom lanes for as much as they've really been in each other's face. It's kind of like a gentleman's agreement just to farm down here. And we have sixes. They're just not all things. At level six, that agreement goes out the window. <laughs> Both teams are looking for the first CC to land. Just, so just that, that opening. Combo. Yeah, Where exactly. is it? And he's just going to hold on to this stun for as long as possible because they really need it. If Leona's able to land anything, I give then LMQ it could easily change man it. points if they go in first because you know they're going to eat a Tibber. They want to see that Tibber miss and then go in. It's like we are going to get a little bit of help here. It's not going to be from No Name. He's backing on the side of LMQ, but Porpoise Pops is in position for this. Now, I love these really deep wards by LMQ. Um... It's not... Oh, I think it just died there to see Vi <laughs> come down. They've got the side side push warded here, but it was just pinged out by VVV. So and it's going to be hard to pull this off, the, but they have the CC for it. The wards in this top lane, or the top side of the jungle, obviously not seeing Elise up there anymore. Or not seeing Vi, I should say. Elise heads down towards the bottom lane. So LMQ is doing a very good job of, if you will, moving off the ball and figuring out what they need to do before it happens. Oh, and they have Ori. Go figure. <laughs> Race number two in the bag for Shao Wei <laughs> Definitely keeping uh, the factor in mind that to always get more, you'll do better. Sometimes you sit back and you're like, all right, I have some. I'll be fine. But he's 137 to 95 in that lane. Ackerman, you could see he was waiting for that war check. 
Um, Renekton, another one of the champions, with the auto attack reset, is able to get those away. Actually, it's the two swings there from the W. Able to eat through wards. Even though he did have to use up his fury for that, it was definitely worth it. You know, we talk about Chinese teams being aggressive, loving that dive. Not so much of a die. Oh, wait a minute. Going in hard on this mid lane. It's going to be a rotation from Rockblood in the bottom lane. Tibber's really only providing AoE damage now. Wei Zhao very well oh. shielding off a lot of that damage. True Shout Barrage passes by the tail end of both No Name and Wei Zhao. Now, he did miss the Shockwave there at the end, but he flashed the Annie's Tibber. Right. Uh, the Annie Tibber. So that was a really good initial escape from him. And then I guess they ended up 50 gold ahead, <laughs> killing Tibbers, taking him down. So good. And before that fight happened, I was pointing out, you know, the aggressive play of uh, these Chinese teammates. Ackerman, Tiamat, first item on Renekton. Very aggressive Renekton build. It does help him shove even better against Mundo. Right. So he can continue sort of uh, his his reign of terror in the top lane. Now popping his ultimate just to be able to claim this red buff. <laughs> and he does get it because he blocks the Mundo Cleaver. He put on ulti? Oh, he's going to follow him? Oh, Vi's coming around the side. Porpoise yeah. Pops is down to the left. They don't have the words to say that's happening. Oh, he hesitation. No, don't hesitate. He's going to the red buff. He's just going to transfer it back. Wait, he has enough time to run to his team. Flash over. Oh, the slice is almost enough for the dice. And now it's B-Sin. He can't safeguard. He can't strike out of this one. Coming over from the side, he does go down. It looked like he went like negative and then came back, but he goes down in the end. Wei Whoa. Zhao trying to come in with no name here. There is a lot of, I think, miscommunication slash, I've helped you, you need to get out. Well, those mobil mobility boots on Elise just paid off right there, yeah. barely arrived in time so that they were, to an they were able to answer that kill. And Ackerman stealing away the red might have been uh, a little too much because he lost his life for it, but then, since his team is able to answer, he can call worth it in the end. And this is just continuously in the mind of Wei Zhao right now. I have to farm if I'm going by a camp. 162 coming in at 15 minutes. He's been hitting 10, 10 a minute, so and he's I, good to we, go. I talked about his that mentality in the beginning, comparing him to the old Froggen style. He loves just hard farming his lane and taking the small jungle camps that are around, like the Wraith camp. We've seen him already fight two times with mm -hmm. Cheese Beluga over those Wraiths. He really is stacking up a giant CS lead. A CS lead and a needlessly large broad already on top of the Athenes that mirrors she, uh, Cheese Beluga. Pretty much they're they're doing amazingly in CS all around, actually. They've got the winning lanes in all three cases here. Not only does Lucian have more CS than Ezreal, but they's all, he's also got the shared money from Leona that she's been giving him with her Targons. Really a longer laning phase than I thought we would see. Nobody's trying to press this into the fights, especially uh, around a dragon maybe that comes up in 44 seconds. We may finally seen, uh, see Gragas' ult come into effect here as well as the Annie and the uh, Ezreal ulti. They can get the AoEs down. They'll be all right. Now that was an interesting play because he was waiting for the uh, mm -hmm. Ezreal to face check Everest and did not throw out the cocoon. No, but he still wants to take a bit of damage to try and bait in. Porpoise pops. The ward baits. All the ward <laughs> Is it worth your life? So yeah, the reason that we kind of just have a standard game here where most of the action is created by Ooh. junglers is because both of these teams sort of made their uh, team fight picks and champion select and the dragon has been down. So there wasn't really a nice point that they could start a fight off until now. I like the leveling by uh, Xiao Wei Xiao in middle as well, going for Full dissonance first before he gets all the levels in queue. Uh -oh. oh, Ackerman a little too far forward. Take the turret. Somebody get the turret. Ackerman goes down, but they pull that back. No, no he still... doesn't. What? He's way oh, alive. What? How does this happen? Oh, well, that missed him too. He I need glasses because I think he died, but he didn't die. He's a god. All right. <laughs> He's a god. Let's take. Keep your eyes on this uh, Renekton. He's here, taking because the he's turret so right now. Deep. Yeah, let's zoom in on that. He's right between the Vi and Dominus. Okay, so he's got the tiny bit of extra health. The and shield. the shield dealed. He went down to what? six life. Now, now here comes the true shot barrage. Just barely, barely whiffs. The shield. I think that threw you off because it was all white and and gray. Well, no, yeah, because it would have been the health that exactly. like, took him to negative four hundred. Well, it would have been that low, but damn. I am so glad. Like I said, I hope we were excited in these games, and it was already putting us on the edge of our seat. But that's 200 CS now.
and, to wage out in the mid. And that wasn't even with a completed Hydra. He didn't have the AoE lifesteal there. That no, was, that's just that was regu his lifesteal. Regular Tiamat, and he's built super tanky. Gotten so much early magic resistant armor. Surviving with that that, uh, that last shield from Shao Wei Shao. Yeah. Yeah, Pretty species. <laughs> he's a god. That's awesome. There you go. Let's look at the AD carries right now, because we did talk about Mash Me a little bit. He's finished the Triforce, and I'm, I have to consider that past that Triforce and the Scepter, there's still a big chunk of change in the hands of Vasily right now. So Lucian and Leona winning that bottom lane, I'd say, as they come out. But like we said before, Kobe, they're winning every lane. Yeah, that's it's one of the reasons why we haven't seen a lot of Ezreal, a whole lot of Ezreal picks lately. Yeah, um, to a lot of his landing phase really depends uh, on those skill shots. If you just miss even a couple, then uh, he does get a little bit behind there. And Lucian, meanwhile, very, very much a lane bully, even with the adjustments to those uh, blinding, blinding lights for his Q. So seeing this, wouldn't we consider that VVV has to break this laning phase now, being down in each one? They gotta put their force powers together. Yeah, they need to find a, a pickoff here with the Gragas, but look at the wards that yeah. have been dropped down by LMQ. They're doing an amazing job of roaming into the VVV territory with uh, all their wards ready after they've taken control of this bottom side map. No middle turret and no bottom outer turret means that they want to claim the blue side for their yep. own because Gragas, without a blue, is much less of a, of a problem. You can't continuously wave clear uh, like Ziggs. They're not just winning. They're definitely keeping VVV from having any openings of coming back. So they're multitasking the fact that they're doing well with still adapting to everything VVV is trying to do. Like you said, the wards coming out, doing very well, and they're able to get... Initiations like this, B Sin getting caught. Oh, out. the crowd he control used right there on the Mundo. He will not go where he has, oh. where he pleases. He will not pass go. He will go straight to the fountain, and it's just a very standard game being played here from LMQ. They win all of their lanes, then they in insert their influence into the blue side jungle, so they control the blue buff yep. as well as the dragon with their team fighting uh, composition here. That's it's pretty much the standard plan for them to finish it out, and then they pick off a kill because of their amazing vision, and it's okay if they stack all their CC because they're taking down uh, the main tank here, the Mundo. Right, and that kind of confused me for a second because I figured he'd be in the top lane. He has teleport for when they need him. Dragon's already down. I don't know. I think they're kind of putting themselves in a bad spot right now, but they are trying to come back from lost lanes all around. Got to give it to LMQ right now for playing so damn well in this game. Wards all across the river keep them safe if they have to kite out of anything, and they're already starting to get offensive wards deep in VVV's jungle. You see that? There's so many wards that Cheese Beluga, even though he could see them, <laughs> he doesn't have the time to get off enough auto attacks to clear them out. They have sweeper swapped. They got three sweepers on the team, sweeper the sweeper swap from the trinkets. Nice. They're going to try to get themselves back in this one, but there is such an amount of gold that they're working against along with items. Those are core items. The Rabadons being finished up. Ori ultimates are going to be absolutely detrimental to their health bars now, and they don't have enough time to start building magic resistance even. This Zacherman build is really interesting to me with the early rush to team at and then going straight for defensive stats there, not even health, just going for the resistances because they work so well with his ulti. It's going to be really hard for him uh, to take all this damage if they decide to buy ult. There he is on to Ackerman. He's not going to have that sustain. No, he gets up to half, so he can charge it back a little bit with that rage, but I don't think it's going to be enough. It does take three to take him down, though, and when three are taking it down, you look around the map, and that's just VVV trying to get a bit of gold. They don't have the minions in position to push anything else. And this is just them trying to gain ground in a long stairwell. Pretty funny answer because LMQ just used everything they had on yeah, the yeah. VVV top laner. So they answer <laughs> back and say, yes, we can That's do that true. too. We'll take down your Renekton. Side lanes not pushed too well. You can see that it's slowed down LMQ. They know they need to formulate a little bit of uh, off the ball play before they can go back to their mid lane pushing. And we see that the lanes switched out now. I'm saying VVV needed to get out of those lanes. That's slowing down LMQ a little bit too. Yeah, VVV are in a tight spot here. Because, you know, LMQ did that all the work winning winning all three lanes, mm -hmm. it's very hard for them to choose a direction to go to. Uh, Porpoise Pops kind of has to make the, the choice 
which lane does he want to salvage, which lane has the biggest opportunity for carrying here, and wasn't really able to get much. I mean, Mundo was able to survive there with, with two kills, but if they just have a tanky Mundo running around in the back and not any damage to output while he's uh, running around, then they won't be able to actually win any of the team right. fights with LMQ. And LMQ can just continue to take dragon after dragon just like and this. increase the gold lead until they're at the point where they want to die. For all that's happened and how far LMQ is ahead on the other side of the map with kills and whatnot, it's only an 8,000 gold lead. And that still stands to be quite big at 23 minutes. But it's not anything that, or I should say, it's something that VVV can come back from. If they hold out, they do have a team that'll scale pretty well in these fights. They also, um, I but mean, VVV, for Ezra. VVV, they do have a chance because they're they're going for the Talisman of Ascension. They could have that speed boost, and that's mm -hmm. what you need to catch somebody out. They've got a Gragas, an Annie, and a Vi. I mean, if they get into a position where they find a few members of LMQ separated from the rest of their team, then they can definitely make a play on that. The only problem for them is that LMQ are not separating. They're coming in right. S5, and... As five, they definitely trump this VVV team as far as Roth team buying power is concerned. Very hard for them to defend this turret. Thought they would have dove a little bit, but there's a Gragas there. They're playing it smart and an Annie. <laughs> Just thinking of the old who LMQ is and what their play style is. But they do see that turret and they're hatching a ward right now. Moore is actually sitting on top of that. Let's see what the poke doesn't actually do too much. They do get the cask out, but that's only going to allow LMQ to play a little bit safer here. Use the Greg Salt there to try and spread out the team and clear the wave at the same time. Mm -hmm. But old Vasily on the side, continually auto-attacking the turret, able to take it down. Did he grab that with the old? No, no, he okay. didn't. Not too close on that. Did go to Oriana, so Xiao Wei Zhao is going to be able to facilitate his team with about 1.83 seconds of ball movement now that he has a level 5 and that blue buff on. It's actually ridiculous. It talked about dancing earlier, and that's what it's like when you play Oriana. That's why she's so fun, because you dance with her. And I really like uh, how his build is going now. He's gone for so much damage after yeah. the Athenes, straight into the two giant AP damage items. The Death Cap plus Void Staff combo is just the ridiculous spike that you would want on any mage. His shockwaves are going to be destroying multiple people. The shockwaves can be followed up, or Tibbers, as we saw earlier. He yeah, just killed straight Tibbers. We himself. haven't seen Rock. <laughs> we haven't seen Rockblood do too much flash initiating. He's kind of been towards the back. A lot of Cheese Beluga's ultimates have been defensive Gragas ultimates, and we haven't seen them try to do a fight on their terms yet. Well, I mean, their options are so limited now. Uh, Not much is since, on their terms. Yeah, since they don't have the vision, you know, even in their own jungle, it's very hard for them to switch over and clear it out. Yeah. Yes, they have three sweepers but it's so dangerous for them to go that deep in their own jungle because LMQ are sticking as five members and they're challenging every ward kill. Ward kills take so long just to get off here that they're they're not even allowing VVV the time to get those auto attacks in. And the game always gets so much harder when the opposing team now owns both sides of the map. Five turrets taken down for LMQ. They look right now at the top. Second tier turret, it's down to half health. And it looks like they're going to stay here for the long haul until this goes down. So VBB, in the comeback at a turret, if they can get a Gragas ultimate to knock one of these members forward mm -hmm. and four of them back, then they can use that Annie combo to kill whoever's knocked forward and just hold. I don't think that they're even going to be able to pursue a team fight. Whoa! After that, he's oh, gone. Oh, he gets the Shockwave double man, but it's also the duo Solar Flare, and they're going to come into that fight very easy when you think you're safe. You gotta watch out for the Ori ball. Very well placed by Wei Zhao. That uh, Death Cat Void Staff combo that we talked about, definitely paying off right there for Xiao Xiao. He just annihilated Gragas. And that is gonna make LMQ feel a lot better, knowing they can do that instantly to the health bars of the other carries. They're feeling a little bit more confident. We may see, you know, think more tower dies maybe. Wow, looks like they're just gonna go force a Baron right now, even with no inhibitor down. Those two kills are enough. Oriana doing her best to zone, but she's by herself. Should still be all right. Getting the shield down. Wei Zhao plays it smart with the flash to Baron get out of that low. one. Very low. Mash on the other side. Oh, that Q almost hit, actually. You see the Baron health. It's down to about 1,000. The smite goes to no name. 
Will the chase be on? Oh, he gets into it. He activates the Tiamat. Throws down a bunch of damage as he gets the Call of the Meek in there as well. And it looks like he will try to possibly lock down Rockblood, but he does not want to go in seeing the rest of the team. Yeah, they definitely want to take that win and go back to base to right. purchase because they just got a huge advantage here. And if they go back to base and get their items with this Baron buff, then there's not much of a response from PvP. But if they kept chasing, being already down uh, their uh, Renekton ultimate, then they, that would be one small way that there would be a chance for PvP. So let's look again at the AD carries. Mash me following up on the same build. Maybe not because, obviously, Vasily is doing it. He's just mm. building his way. But two different style AD carries, same build. I feel like it works better for Lucian. I'm going to go ahead with you. Um, because Lucian here, you know, the way he's building really, really um, a mobile build here. Right. Because Gragas has the opportunity to split up the team, and then Vi is going to be able to single him out, that's pretty much all he's worried about is being separated from his team and then Vi ultied. So he's got these offensive items that provide a lot of utility for him. So he can make his own escapes even if, if he does get separated and caught out. You know, he can activate that Blade of the Ruin King as soon as he's out of the CC and make use of the speed buff to separate himself and get out alive. Working off the lanes, knowing that have mid pushed up, they're gonna head towards the bottom lane. Really gotta look back and figure out how LMQ has done all this. We talked about no name, Porpoise Pops, and everybody in the top lane when they hit Ackerman and b -Sin. That really went in favor of LMQ, and they've kind of capitalized off that the entire game. It's not something we've really seen up until even this year, the split for us in NA, as everybody's a lot more definitive once they're getting the ball rolling. Yeah, I mean, I did really like the early game moves from No Name, but it's so easy as a jungler. When all your lanes are winning, you just yeah, that's you feel right. like a kid in candy store. You have all the <laughs> options in front of you. You can either go to one of your winning lanes to counter gank, um, or, you know, if the other jungler doesn't show up, then you can just dive right there. And you can also have the option of going for invades because the other jungler is not going to have the support of the laners. Whereas, you know, you've got this Renekton up top who's been shoving in Mundo and went with the Tiamat just so he can keep that up and shove all the way to the secondary turret. And then you've got your, your mid laner there farming like a beast, taking every single Wraith camp on both sides. Yeah. It's just Three, very, very hard to do it. 350 CS in 30 minutes. Looks like LMQ destined and really ready to make it into that round of eight. They seem like a powerful team. It deserved the hype, maybe. Yes, I believe they did. Uh, I mean, just from the laning phase, I'd have to say, these guys definitely deserve it. It was very strong. They weren't challenged, but they also didn't lay back at all once they started to get a lead. We just talked about that. Now with Baron surrounding them, they have about one minute left on that exactly. So we'll see Baron in four minutes, but this next minute is just VVV really trying to hold on tight. We'll have to see if, uh, you know, LMQ actually decide to go for a dive. Gragas is doing a really good job clearing out these waves, but every time he does, it's after Vasily has gotten a couple shots onto the turret. And Vasily can get those double shots after proccing his really attack, or his ability, so they're easily chipping away at these. Oh, there it is! They're trying to get onto Ackerman. You can actually see B-Sin coming off the fountain, just bought that red elixir. So these guys know they need to make an impact in this fight. They actually missed the shockwave there again. So Xiao is Xiao, mm -hmm. another whiffed shockwave. They still though, they've got an ace in their, up their sleeves with the Leona ultimate. Right. That is pretty much all that they need to actually go in for a team fight. So they're sticking around this turret. They got it down to half and they're gonna continue the pressure even without shockwave. That's something that LMQ has been doing all game. They go for what they want. They never kind of turn back and second guess it. Now onto the inhibitor with every member of VVV in their face. They are not deterred here. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, there you go. There you go, one more hit. <laughs> Ackerman not finding himself in too bad of a spot. The ball's right next to him for the shield and they are gonna dive in on this one. There goes the calling and it's gonna pass everybody but hits Porpoise Pops just in the end. And it looks like it's Ackerman. No, not Ackerman. Wei Xiao getting a kill for himself with Vasily as they back out to reassess the fight. They're not going very far. Nope, they've got waves up top and they already did some damage to this middle turret, so they're gonna be able to make a clean sweep of this base, it looks like. One more inhibitor turret in their favor. That's gonna make oh, it Ackerman, eight Rillo. all together. Oh, cheesy! Trying to get into this one, but it's not gonna be enough. He gets himself out. So the cask is down for now, but they're doing what they can. At least they're taking chances. 
You're going to have to take a lot more chances here because LMQ definitely... Or at least make the chances count. Yeah, they look like the next uh, next visit into the base, they're, they're probably going to have a, a pretty good time because and it's a, an exposed inhibitor, and LMQ already won the team fight with a turret standing. So exposed inhibitor, they should make really quick work of that one. And then the double inhibs down, a double super minion wave is going to be enough for them to, to probably push in on those Nexus turrets. Hydra finished up recently by Ackerman. Still pretty interesting build coming in. And we see, what is this, 4, 0, and 4, and Wei Zhao has bought himself Sheen. Yes, so uh, that's a, a <laughs> fairly rare build on Oriana. Her passive does give her auto attacks extra power, uh, but I feel like he's going to show off a little bit here. Uh, just how good his mechanics are that he can weave in the auto attacks with all of the Ori skill activations because Ori is one of those champions that hey if you're gonna if you're gonna do it like her spells are such yeah. low cooldown you can get the continuous sheen activations and then yep. if you upgrade that into a lich bane you're basically just adding in another AP scaling to your champion and making Oriana just a beastly late game scaler. Beast in thrown on the ultimate there's no real ignite on him no there is ignite on him right now but it's not going to be too effective Ackerman is in the front of the fight they're able to take down Porpoise that's quite a bit of the crowd control they're slowing it down <laughs> they see cheesy they're just able to focus everyone out. So that was a flash cocoon yep. whiff on the standing still target there. But they're <laughs> able to finish this one off flawlessly. Wow, LMQ definitely deserving the hype. A strong play by LMQ. Wei Zhao with Oriana in the mid lane helping to carry his team. 5-0 and 6 with the rest of the help. All the lanes winning and sending LMQ to the round of 8. Impressive play, I have to say. Absolutely. And now we realize why a lot of the other challenger teams would dodge them, stop queuing. <laughs> when they got into uh, the into the ranked queue. But how do you get better, right? You got to play exactly. against those Don't teams. Don't be scared. Competition, strong competition. That's the only way that it's you're going to get better. It's one of the best comments on Reddit right now mm -hmm. is everybody's asking when to play ranked. Do it now. Just do it. It's the mm -hmm. best time. It's not going to be better later. It's not going to be better five minutes ago. No. You, you can go back five minutes. Just aim for the top. Aim for the top. Just like <laughs> LMQ did a very definitive win over VVV Gaming Red. And it's really... I guess something we expected, a lot of people expected these to be a definitive game from LMQ, mm -hmm. but will they be able to carry it out in the, the round of eight? I mean, I, I feel confident putting my vote behind them. Um, I feel bad for, for VVV and Don't Mash Me, but, you know, Don't Mash Me didn't really get to make any plays in that game. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, if coming in for the win, we didn't, haven't seen much Ezreal. He hasn't been known as one of the top carries, and we kind of talked about that. It's not handicapping yourself, but it's not putting you in a position to completely win your lane by picking Ezreal. Yeah, and the fact that they went with that Leona, with the Targons, able to get the early shove in. I mean, Vasily is also just an exceptional AD carry himself, so hard competition there. Maybe you don't match me, we'll learn something, and next time around, they can come back bigger and better. I mean, I, I expect big things, better things from this VV team. I think they've got a good future. So let's talk a little bit about uh, in the top lane. We had Ackerman build it out on the team okay. at first. <laughs> he kind of locked it in. Ackerman was pretty aggressive. Usually we, we see everybody going for defense. Why did the Tiamat work for him at first? I really like the play from him because um, he's playing to Renekton's strengths and he's kind of building to extend those strengths. You know, usually Renekton has the upper hand in the early levels. And then if you get the Tiamat, you can continually shove up that wave. And he also had ward coverage. So right. he was drawing a lot of uh, extra resources of VVV up towards him. The fact that all three went, lanes were winning at the same time for LMQ yeah. is really kind of what allowed him to do that. So if all your lanes are pushing, then it's much easier for you to go aggressive like that and build the TM at um, and get that extra AOE damage and then switch over to building tanky afterwards. And for just VVV altogether on the other side, and I know this is quite a conditional question, but when do you start to group when you lose two turrets, when you know all the lanes are losing by 20 CS and there's no turrets down? When, when do you have to make that call to stop a snowball or get back in? Well, I mean, with these, the way these teams were set up here, with both of them kind of team fighting compositions, okay. um, they, they did need to make use of picking somebody off. So it's you want to run to whatever side of the map you have more vision on and right. kind of hope for some, to make something happen there. Because like I said, it's such a hard choice just to put all on the jungler, if all of your lanes are losing, putting it all on Porpoise yep. Pops to decide, okay, I'm going to go here, try and get you back in the game. Because if he makes the wrong choice and um, the other jungler is there, 
he's going to lose by default since his lane is weaker. All right, we'll have to see. We have more games to go. we got to take a quick break, but when we return, the top-seeded Cognitive Forge battles Why So Esports with a spot in the quarterfinals on the line. The 2014 North American Challenger Series will be right back. Don't touch that browser. <laughs> 